our ultimate desire ever is to be able to have a song that we've written, to be up on stage and sing it, and to have the audience be singing it back. I'm crazy about you, you're crazy about me. Well, we were all born in Reseda, California. Yeah, got that Tom Petty song, Free Fallen. Song. It's been a long day living in Reseda. People hear that we're from California and, and you think, oh, that's not country. But really, um, my mom grew up from, in a small town called Visalia. Our dad is from Bakersfield. We grew up on um, a ranch. Grew up yeah. on a ranch. And so a lot of our memories growing up, even though we lived in California, we're all um, Central California, Central, yeah, which is like the South. Yeah, it was very much like the South, very rural, lots of farmland and, and people that really love country music. I mean, growing up, um, that's that's all we listen to, that and Christian music. And, uh, yeah. you know, I can remember dancing around, you know, in our nightgowns to like Ricky Skaggs and, mm -hmm. and stuff when we were little and, and Randy Travis. And um, when Winona went and did her solo thing, we wore out her oh, CD. Man. And uh, so even though we lived in California, um, we always really, really felt um, that country music had a huge part in our lives. Uh, we started playing uh, basically country rock. This was kind of back, this was a long time ago. This was back in the, the Eagles and Linda Ronstadt days when we were living in LA. And uh, so we started playing a, uh, at the Palomino, the famous Palomino Club. And out of that came a recording contract uh, with the artist that we were working with. And, uh, and from there we met somebody who was producing Waylon. So that's how we, we met Waylon. And within a few months, we wound up going out on the road with them, and, which we were there out there for uh, five and a half years the first time. When we chose to have children, I, I, I didn't want to mix the two. Uh, it was a pretty crazy life, and I went, no, if I'm going to have children, I'll be a mom, and I will raise my children. So we were, we didn't even see anybody for about ten years, and then um, um, we all got back together again, and we ended up moving out here to Nashville. and, and uh, and then there was one morning, I remember Waylon calling me the night before, and he said, uh, Carter, come on over and watch the sunrise with Jesse and I. And I said, sure. So I set my alarm, and I went over there, and, uh, and we were sitting there, and we watched the sunrise come up. And I said, you know, I wish that we had an opportunity, all of us, just to do it one more time. I want to show my girls that no matter how old you get, you know, music is music. It's, it's not age-related. It's, it's heart-related. You had the headlights off so no one could see you sneaking up the driveway. I was about 17, waiting there for you at the window around midnight. A typical night at our house is when, especially when they were little, when we would eat dinner and then they would disappear for a while and we knew it was coming. And then they'd come in and they would sell us tickets to come to the, to the show. And so <laughs> we'd have these little tickets that they'd made up, and I think they were like a quarter or something. Yeah, you had and, to pay. Yeah, you had to pay. And we'd, all, we'd be so previous. tired because we'd be, you know, we'd been working and all that kind of stuff. We had deadlines and stuff. But, but Barney's so good about that. And, and, and we just go, okay, we, let, let's make some coffee. Well, there's, there's a show tonight, yeah, let's go make some coffee. We'll be right with you. <laughs> and we'd sit there, and they'd have intermission, and they'd have food, and they'd always have a show, and, and it, was, it was hysterical. Uh, you know, we always knew that our, our parents were musicians and a little different. Um, Waylon came into our lives uh, when we were a little bit older. Well, I guess you were like eight. I was like eight. Mm -hmm. yeah. And... Uh, Waylon actually put out a children's album and mm -hmm. contacted my dad and wanted him to produce it for, for him. So that's kind of how everybody got reunited. And Waylon just brought such a wonderful presence into our lives and became such an influence and such um, almost like a grandfather type figure. Faded jeans laying in a field on the ground. You and me smiling, rolling around. My mom called me, I was working at the time, and she was like, um, 
Rebecca, you need to keep your cell phone on you because Toby Keith might be calling you today. And I was <laughs> like, what? I mean, what am I going to say? But basically, he really liked the demo that he heard. And so um, we set up a, a showcase for him and different people to label to come see us. We played for him and uh, we got done with our songs and we got off stage and he was like, why don't y'all play another one? So Alrighty. Joanna's <laughs> like, yeah. we're like, Joanna, I don't care if you don't remember the chords, but get up there, we're playing another song. So Excuse we did and uh, we sat down and, and the rest was kind of history. We talked to him for a long time long and time. he told us all about Show Dog and what his plans were and um, we just felt like it would be a really good fit. We so, clicked. Yeah, we definitely clicked with him. is my older sister that I've looked up to my whole life and probably the most passionate person I've ever met. She's very passionate about, you know, whether it be about music or about, you know, she really likes the skirt that she's wearing tonight, you know, <laughs> she's just very passionate about everything in life and I think that's a really beautiful thing. So, Emily's kind of the mother of the group. Mm -hmm. This is something else that we She definitely. Is. Yes, we've discovered this in the past few years. You know, she cleans a lot, which is good. Becky and I don't really clean. <laughs> no, they don't. At all. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm getting better. But Emily, you know, no, no. keeps us together, I think. She's kind of the mom of the group. So. But I'm not a boring mom. No, not at all. <laughs> You're like a cool mom that goes out and like, has a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Anna. Joanna is our little hippie girl. I know we call you a hippie girl, and you're yeah. really not. But um, <laughs> she's, she's not really I'll take it. She's not. But she, Joanna, is always that person that I've said. You know, she was, you know, in diapers writing her, you know, theories for life, and then she's always been writing songs her whole life. And you know, 14 and writing songs. You'd think she was like 46 and divorced three times. They're so like. <laughs> deeply heartfelt so um, that's what I love about Joanna but I think we all definitely have different personalities that we bring to the table and we would not be complete without you know, all three of us and I don't think we could do it without all three of us either we've said if there was only two of us there's no way we can make this work we balance we, each other out. we do <laughs>